Hello everyone, this is the lecture number 18 from uh, my dad's GTSNX uh, as a program f uh, used for the geotechnical uh, engineering uh, course. Uh, we are going to talk today about the last topic in this course, which is uh, the bearing capacity of shallow foundation. We already talked before about the raft and the piles and many topics, but today we will just have an idea about the shallow foundation. So what is bearing capacity? This is a very important question when we are designing and when we are analyzing the shallow foundation. Which, uh, uh, what is uh, bearing capacity? Bearing capacity, like, um, first thing, if we are designing our foundation, our foundation should be safe according to two main parameters. The first thing is the uh, uh, ability of the soil to carry this load, which is the shear strength of the soil. The second thing is the settlement, because settlement should be allowable or in the limits we agree to, so the structure can stay stable so we can say that the soil doesn't fail in the mean uh, in the like the general meaning we know like it's not like a failure that the soil will disappear it just like the soil will not able to carry the load coming uh, over it so it will settle more and the structure will use its serviceability so there must be there, there must be safe against overall shear failure in the soil that supports them and they can't undergo excessive settlement or displacement the load per unit area of the foundation at which the shear failure in soil occur is called the ultimate bearing capacity as we can see in this graph uh, the bearing capacity uh, or when we have uh, like a footing which uh, sit on a found, uh, on soil like this and this is the embedment depth uh, over the uh, over the foundation depth DEF we can say that uh, we can say that uh, this is the embedment depth so the stability or the resistance of the loot comes over this foundation comes from the shear resistance over this uh, shape or this uh, line uh, there will be because this is the first wedge this is the second wedge this is the third wedge and as we know this is gonna be symmetric in the left hand side as well so when the load starts to come to pressure here, this is called the elastic uh, wedge. This elastic wedge acts as a wall. This wall will start to push this uh, uh, spiral wedge here. So there will be a uh, so there will be like an active on this uh, wedge, and there will be a passive earth pressure on this wedge, which will cause passive air pressure as well in this wedge here the friction so this two wedges will have this will settle this uh, triangular thing and this is spiral and this triangular will start to move so this is the spiral wing and this is called ranking passive ranking wing wedge because this will start to upheave up here and the soil will start to fail because there will be excessive settlement for the foundation here so what causes stability for this foundation is the friction between the soil here and the soil here over this line so this line here and this line here those are the two causes stability for this uh, this problem so as we can see here the main parameter according to Rankin who is uh, according to Terzaghi sorry who defines this equation that this is uh, uh, it's all related to the friction angle of the soil so if the fric there is no friction angle here we will find this which is will not be uh, visible as we can see here and it's all depending on this elastic or rigid uh, area so this is like a meaning of what uh, what is the bearing capacity and how we can understand the physical meaning of the shear resistance of the soil during the loading as we can see here there are modes of bearing capacity failure if the soil is very stiff and uh, on is very 
uh, strong as we can see that we will see the uh, the three parts of the failure we will see the rigid, like the rigid or the elastic uh, we see the elastic wall or wedge and we see the spiral one and we can see the Rankin passive wedge we can see here at the load displacement curve that the soil will start uh, to carry the load and it will go until reaching this point this point will be Q ultimate and then will start to settle under list load and this is considered a softening behavior because the soil is strong and usually we talked about this softening behavior if we just rotated this curve and we can see the softening behavior here we can see that uh, this soil is weaker and this wedge doesn't like the soil started to fail and settle more here and we couldn't get this wedge we can see here that the ultimate bearing capacity is Q ultimate here so and if the soil is very weak like soft soil like this this is the only part will be created and this is the relation between the load and the settlement we call this punching failure and we call this the general failure and we call this local failure how to calculate the bearing capacity everyone like has some equation there's uh, Terzaghi who, uh, who is the first one who uh, one of the, the people who put a major equation for the bearing capacity and he defined it according to the shape of the foundation if the foundation is a strip foundation we can calculate it Q ultimate C and C Q and Q plus half gamma P and gamma C is the cohesion of the soil Q is the embedment depth which is DF by the gamma of the soil plus gamma is the gamma of the soil beneath here because this is the part half gamma P and this is the part of the triangle here so this is related to the soil beneath the foundation but Q here is related to the embedment depth here and C and C is uh, related to the cohesion of the soil and C and Q and gamma this is the bearing capacity factor and we will see how we can calculate them in a while for a square footing Q ultimate is equal 1.3 C and C the Q and Q plus 0.4 gamma P and gamma for circular foundation we found that our Terzaghi put the equation equal 1.3 C and C the plus Q and Q plus 0.3 gamma P and gamma but how we can calculate the bearing capacity according to my roof who started to put a general equation to uh, generate the bearing capacity for different foundation including the shape factor and the depth factor because he assumed that with uh, increasing the depth we can see that the shear failure will change that's why he included like the depth factor and the shear f uh, and the shape factor as we can see here in this equa equation c and c q and q not a uh, half gamma p and gamma and he included gamma c uh, s uh, and gamma c d s is related to the shape factor d is related to the depth factor and as we can see it's in each uh, parameter here how to calculate bearing capacity factor there is a lot of equations here and there is a lot of uh, a lot of scientists who uh, a lot of scientists who uh, uh, define uh, defined the gamma for uh, as, as a uh, the bearing capacity factors for uh, uh, for the bearing uh, for the shallow foundation uh, Brantel and Renser those are the people the first people who created this uh, created or investigated uh, these factors uh, then Terzaghi and Meyerhoff they supported uh, their uh, uh, their equation so they, uh, they said that NC equal NQ minus 1 cotan 
phi phi is the angle of internal friction f cotan f and q here we will know how to calculate it in a second and this is in q sorry this is in q so in q here it has been assumed uh, and it has been assumed through uh, or proposed from Prantel and Renson as the same component by Terzaghi and Meyerhoff and it's equal 10 square 45 degrees plus friction angle over 2 and this is multiplied by exponential uh, 10 phi so we can see and uh, Meyerhoff proposed another equation uh, proposed an equation for NC and sorry for NQ Forty plus five phi uh, over forty minus phi, and Terzaghi proposed another equation as we can see here. We can see that the bearing capacity factor is mainly depend on the friction angle. So if the friction angle of the soil equals zero, that means that this factor will equal zero, and this factor will equal zero like n q and n gamma will equal zero and here as we can see this is uh, uh, n, n, n gamma and there is a lot of scientists who proposed an equation for the n gamma and it mainly depend on q which mainly depend on phi so we can see that that all bearing capacity factor n c n q n gamma are mainly depending on the uh, friction angle of the soil now for the depth for the shape factor uh, there are a lot of equation has been proposed from uh, different scientists like Meyerhoff and Vizic and Mikulhowski uh, they propose different equation for the shape factor so as we can see here they depend on the two dimension of the foundation and the friction angle and as we can see here all the equation are mainly depending on those uh, three parameter uh, for the depth factor we can use one of these equation and we can see that Meyerhoff and Hansen and Vizic and uh, Salagru uh, have proposed uh, equation and it's all depend on the friction angle and depend on the embedment depth as we can see here there are different cases for the bearing capacity first thing and this equation has proposed that the load comes on the bearing capacity as uh, perpendicular but what if the load is uh, inclined so some scientists did some uh, uh, test and uh, some uh, calculation and they added a factor for the inclination of the load but what if the load is uh, has eccentricity and inclined at the same time so at this case we start to treat we, uh, this uh, this footing as an equivalent footing as uh, this uh, this p will be p minus e minus 2 e and we can start to solve our uh, foundation as an equivalent foundation with the new dimension we can see that there are some cases where the footing will be just close uh, close to uh, the slope so the shearing capacity uh, failure surface here will not be fully developed so the capacity will decrease according to this finally there is something called bulb pressure when we start to load our uh, foundation there will be a uh, pressure distribution in the soil and this is depend on the shape of the foundation if it's continuous or square we can see that the distribution of the load from the continuous uh, uh, continuous uh, foundation is better because the load 
is uh, can be die easily and it can be distributed uh, very easily so as we can see here that um, uh, the, the, the weight has died at uh, depth 5b uh, but in the square it died at more than uh, sorry at uh, here at 5b and here it goes up to 3b here's a distribution of p uh, up to like laterally up to 2b here up to 1 half p so there is a concentration in the loot in this area as a, but here it can be distributed more laterally now we'll start to create uh, a model uh, uh, into uh, like a, for a shallow foundation for a strip shallow foundation and we will start to compare this with the manual calculation so we'll start to create a new model into dimension and we can go here and we start to define our grid by one meter and we can say apply cancel and this is the dimension we have so this dimension is 40 meters we'll have it we'll just make it 10 apply so we will come here and we make a foundation of 2 meters so we will make face so this is our foundation here will be 2 meters and we can say that we will increase or refine the displacement beneath it as we can see here we go here to um, uh, imprint and we can imprint this face by this uh, by these tools and shorten direction and we say apply as we can see here now we can go to mesh here and we go to control seeds and we say this will be 0.1 here and here and here and this will be 0.25 and say this is 0.5 and done then we go here and we start to create material first material will be elastic concrete and we choose 2.1 E5 so E7 and we make its weight unit weight zero because we don't need any weight from it we will add load and we say apply then we create another material we call it soil and we kill, call it clay then we say the modulus of elasticity for the clay material will be 2 like five uh, five thousand that's fine and the gamma will be nine seventeen and the borus will be seventeen and it will be more coulomb and for the nonlinear parameters this will be O point uh, C will be uh, we will edit thirty and zero for for friction angle and we say soil and we say okay properties will start to add 2d 
clay for soil and footing for concrete and we will go to mesh 2d and we choose this one and we mesh it 0.1 and we we'll call it footing and apply then we choose this part of soil and we say this will be 0.1 this will be 0.25 this will be 0.5 Finally, this will be 1. As we can see, this is very well refined and the, all the meshing are connected together. So, we are going to show this by material or property as we can see here. And we can create gravity loot and we can create auto constraints here finally we go here to construction stages and sorry we can add load so to add the load we're gonna add it as a displacement in the middle here and I'm going to add displacement minus one and life loot and say apply and I go now to construction stages and I say add for the initial stage I add everything except the footing and say clear and I call this initial stage and I add boundary condition and ground boundary condition and I say save then for the new case I say footing and I say footing save finally I add life load and I say save but at here I add the life load on 50 stage or say 100 stage and I tell him save everything so it will settle like 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter and say ok save close close and add construction stages k node the same what we do and we say run one and say lie cancel and I start to run my problem I have to save it in our lecture and we call it uh, pairing for example and I say enter it will take some time until we solve it so I'm gonna boost the video until we reach to the limit so now we can look at the results here so we can come to see the displacement here as we can see and we'll go here to cutting diagram and I add a cutting diagram here and I show the results in y direction and say apply 
and I come here and I show the stresses and this is the most important thing and we see that the stresses here is around we can make our foundation more stuff and we say ok close and we start to run it So as we can see now, this is just getting the stresses from here, so I'm deleting this one and I'm going to take a diagram here and we say in Y direction now So, so let's check again uh, this property yeah I know where is the problem came from that this is the same material if we went to mesh here and we started to see this is all concrete so we have to change this into we go to parameter here because that doesn't didn't make sense we choose all of our material here we create clay and now we start to run our problem because you just can't take any answer randomly you have to know that these numbers make sense so now we are waiting until this is done so we can see the conversions we can open Excel to take the results after we can monitor here the percentage of the answer this is 53, 54, 55 almost done no problem in the answer now we go to the answer here and we start to show the plain stresses in y direction now we can see auto range here and we can take a cutting diagram here from this point to this point and show it in Y direction now we can see the num uh, like the value here so we can take so this is the value here like almost 156 we can do here and we can just come here and we say extract this value here and we say show me this uh, like stresses 
and show me SYY and show me table and I just take this one here and I go back here and I show displacement and y direction I show table here and I put it here now I just can insert the relation between both of them so we can see here they are general so here we can see the displacement and we can see so obvious from this that the bearing capacity here is 160 because the load was stable and this is matching this behavior because the soil is weak so as we can see here the load will be stable and the settlement will increase so the settlement increase but the load is stable so we can say the bearing capacity here is from 140 to 160 if we went to my excel sheet here which I prepared for uh, modeling uh, for calculating the bearing capacity using Terzaghi equation so I will start to add the width of the uh, of the footing to 2 and the, the length will be 1000 or whatever it doesn't matter the DF or the embedment depth is 0 and the water will be very far so I will put it 100 and gamma is 17 phi is 0 and uh, C is 30 so as we can see here this is the value it's 150 and this is correct because this is the, the ultimate value here so the ultimate value here is 150 so if we came here in this graph and we started to calculate the bearing capacity we will come here and we will just start to add a line here like this to be we will insert a line here as we can see and we insert another line here so it's around it's around 150 and that's correct so we can say that now we can calculate the bearing capacity from my dad's gts nx and it's almost accurate here like we can get the real value so back to the software here so i already just got the stresses and the displacement and i draw the relation between them here I will show the results of the displacement here as we can see this is the auto range here and this is sigma 0 we can see the four like the three widges here so this is the elastic part this is the part will start to move up here let's deform we can see this part start to move up here and the, uh, this start to move down so this is the bearing capacity as we, and this is the pressure bulb so we can say this is the bearing capacity for clay we can open this and we can go here and we start to change the soil to 350 and 
we go to nonlinearity and we make this like 1 or 0.2 and we make the friction angle 30 degrees as it's like sand layer and we run this again and it will take some time to be run So we will do the same thing since this will take too long time here we already understood the concept behind this I will just increase the I'm gonna increase this to 60 and I will increase this to 19 and I will increase this to 19 and I will add this as 1 and 30 and I say OK I will save this model and I will start to run it again but we already understand the concept and how we can model the bearing capacity so you keep this model to run and it will take a long time and after it's done you can start to compare it with the bearing capacity calculation uh, for square footing the problem will not be simulated in 2d it should be simulated in 3d and uh, to do this uh, because as we know that the square footing is a 3d problem and we can just simulate it in 2d and to take the effect of the square footing uh, you can simulate this in 3d uh, with the same way and you can get the bearing capacity so you can just keep the model run I will stop the lecture at this point and you just go here and look at the displacement and you can uh, see your problem and which will take a bit long time and finally uh, I will end this lecture here you can calculate your bearing capacity uh, here uh, like in Excel sheet and there are like uh, if you are calculating the bearing capacity according to Meyerhoff or Terzaghi or Hansen or Visk, Visage and all these factors and you can get all the values from different scientists I already prepared my excel sheet you can do the same with yours and this is the pile capacity here you can calculate your pile and print the relationship between them and this is for different piles in the next course uh, I'm going to prepare another course for foundation uh, design and a different kind of foundation and retaining structure and some other advanced stuff in geotechnical engineering and this is for micro piles it's already prepared and we will talk how we can prepare excel sheets like this so um, so I will end the lecture here and this is the last lecture in this course so see you in next uh, in next in the next course thank you so much